Maki Zenin is one of Jujutsu Kaisen's most popular characters, and for many good reasons. She's badass, she is one of the most physically impressive characters in the series, her design is fantastic, her backstory is interesting, and seeing how she interacts within the world of Jujutsu Kaisen as a sorcerer with no curse energy is extremely satisfying. Not to mention that this woman is fine, listen, listen. Y'all know I, I, I love me some muscular women in my life. Uh, Lean Beef Patty, Brigitte from Overwatch, uh, that one chick with white hair from Dora Dora. Like, oh yeah, y y your boy ain't scared of no 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 muscle, no meat. Nah, let me just gotta get gotta get that the way. But <laughs> we're not here to talk about that today. I wanted to sit down and break down Maki's strength, and I want to paint a picture for people to actually give her the respect and flowers that she deserves because the Maki slander is absolutely rampant, and I I, I think it needs to stop honestly. Heavy, heavy spoilers for the manga concerning Jujutsu Kaisen. So if you are caught up with the manga or you are anime only, please make sure you click off this video, but leave a like first, I appreciate it. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So before the Shibuya incident, I don't want to say that Maki was fodder status or anything like that, but she was definitely far from impressive. Her two wins that we saw in season one were against Miwa and Mai, two of the weakest students throughout Jujutsu Tech and the Kyoto schools. I mean, Mai's technique is just... <laughs> And Miwa is literally just that one chick from Konosuba in a pantsuit. Now granted, she was able to catch a bullet from Mai, which is actually very impressive. An average bullet moves at around 1,700 miles an hour, which is six times faster than the fastest car in the entire world. So that uh, at least counts for something, I'm sure. Now moving on from the fights against the Kyoto students, Maki teamed up with Megumi and the other students to fight off Hanami, a special grade curse. Hanami was mostly toying with the rest of the cast as it's very possible Hanami could have just cast her domain expansion just killed all of them there but maki was doing ote ote maki was doing okay until she got stabbed through the arm playful cloud did give maki a slight edge as playful cloud is strictly reliant on the user's physical prowess rather than cursed energy which is why toji was able to use it to great effectiveness and absolutely annihilated dagon within their battle in shibuya speaking of actually uh, maki was Honestly, a liability during the fight with Dagon, as Nabito attempted to let her know, albeit in an extremely uh, blunt way, but Nanami tried to tell her with a little bit of more uh, tact and, and finesse. Nice guy, Nanami. Gotta love him. Now, Maki did a little bit of work against Dagon with a couple of blows from Playful Cloud, but they didn't really do anything more than stun him momentarily and send him back. They didn't really do anything of significant damage. But then Toji takes over this fight, and... Uh yeah we, we, yeah, we all know how this ends. So then after Dagon is defeated, the group is all recuperating and getting their bearings back when Toji snatches Megumi away and Jogo ends up torching Nanami, Naobito, and Maki. Nanami is gravely injured, Naobito is killed, and Maki is severely burned, but managed to survive due to her heavenly restriction on her body. Maki, after Shibuya, has burn scars covering up and down her body, and during her training while she was recovering, she noticeably bulked up in far as her size goes. And listen, hey, ain't no complaining on this side. You dig what I'm saying? <laughs> listen, if you want to uh, squat me, bench press me, deadlift me, it, 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 don't, it don't matter. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm tough. I'll be all right. Anyway, before the Cullen Games officially start, she goes off to dismantle the Zenin clan and retrieve weapons from the clan's vault. When she arrives, she finds a wounded Mei and her father, Ogi. Now, during this fight, Maki wields Dragon Bone, Juzo's masterpiece. Uh, Juzo, the guy that ran up to Gojo screaming about how he wanted to make him to a co-rack or some shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah that guy. Dragon Bone accumulates force and curse energy and shoves it out the back of the blade so it, you know, obviously hits harder, kind of like a rocket or like any sort of propulsion against something. And initially, Maki ends up breaking Ogi's glade when they clash, but Ogi's technique allows him to forge a tip in fire and ends up wounding Maki, unfortunately. Ogi drags Maki and Mai into this room full of grade 2 cursed spirits that threaten to consume them soon after Ogi leaves the room, as they are in fear of him even being there. Ogi talks about how he would have been the head of the Zenin clan if it wasn't for his children holding him back and disappointing everyone around them. Ogi says that Heavenly Restriction is massively overrated, as sorcerers train their bodies day in and out to be reinforced with cursed energy and that Maki isn't really all that special because of this. Maki wakes up on a bench and on a bench? Holy shit. Maki wakes up on a beach and Mai gives her a farewell as she reveals that intrinsically twins are tied when it comes to Jujutsu. Even if Maki trains with all of her might to gain more strength, it won't matter because Mai herself does not want to become stronger. 
Mai confesses that if she makes one more object, she'll die, but she will give Maki this one last thing, but to promise that she will destroy everything in her path. Maki cries out for Mai to wake up, and with this, she has a new sword in her hand, and then she follows up with dispatching all the cursed spirits held in this room. When Ogi lays eyes on Maki, a very similar fear is instilled in him, which is an overwhelming sense of malice, which is almost exactly a, a mirror to Toji Zeni. Ogi attempts to use his technique release Blazing Courage, but before his brain can relay the message to his mouth, Maki bisects his head almost effortlessly. This is what I refer to when I refer to as Maki's awakening. Maki is surrounded by members of the Kukuda unit as she effortlessly and brutally kills all those who challenge her. Like she straight up like a Mortal Kombat fatality some of these dudes. Like this is so raw. Like even considering that this chapter looked a lot rougher because Gege was having severe health issues during this time and this is before a two and a half month break on the series. I mean this this looks really good. The Hiei, the strongest sorcerers in the Zenin clan, are a group of sorcerers who are semi grade one or higher as they attempt to stop Maki's massacre of the Zeni clan. She pretty effortlessly breaks out of this god bind thing that, you know, god Goku used on Broly and Jinichi attempts to hit Maki with the Izuku Midoriya 100% consecutive punches, but uh, fortunately for him and as cool as his design is, it wasn't a very effective. Dude, this shot of Maki is so raw. Like when she's walking with this dude's head, like it's just... <laughs> Big her energy here, man. Like this single panel cemented me as the captain of the Maki Supremacy Brigade. So here, Noya attempts to square up with her. Now, initially, Noya ends up getting the upper hand on her due to the speed of projection sorcery, and she thinks to herself that she may be in a bit of a compromising position due to projection sorcery being kind of funky and ignoring the laws of physics and, and logic and such. As Noya charges towards Maki in an attempt to punch through her body, she prepares to use Shirina Goi, Goi Gata? I'm sorry, my Japanese is terrible, but basically this is a sumo fighting stance. Noya slaps her arm and prepares to use his finishing blow but Maki faces him and says to him, you move at 24 frames a second, don't you? And she punches him, leaving a imprint of her fist on his face, severely disfiguring him. As Maki ends up clearing out the rest of the clan, Maki ends up slicing her own mother's neck, but before her mother passes away, she stabs Noya and delivers the final killing blow to him. Now, so far, Maki has shown incredible endurance and tactical intellect, surviving the special grade directly burning her body, taking on an entire clan's worth of assassins and sorcerers with hacks and abilities, and being able to discern just how Noya's ability worked after seeing Naobito's a couple of times with no explanation is extremely impressive. Now here we get to my favorite fight that Maki participates in. Noritoshi Kamo, uh, no, not not that one, the good one. Noritoshi Kamo and Maki meet up within the Cullen games and suddenly Maki is blitzed by a cursed spirit that has the ability to speak, which feels extremely odd considering only special grades and grade ones are capable to speak to this level of defectiveness. As Maki is suddenly speed blitzed by his curse, it peels its face back to reveal that it's Noya, who was not killed by Jujutsu, but by Maki's mother, who killed him with a knife stab. So, because of this, he returned as a cursed spirit. Now, Noya ends up transforming into a cursed womb and almost ends up killing Noritoshi. Noya ends up going so fast, he hits Maki at Mach 3, who is able to survive the attack. Now, mind you, Mach 3 is 2,301.81 miles per hour, and Noya hit her dead on. That is a, that, that's a crazy endurance feat. That, that, is, that is ridiculous. Eventually, Noritoshi is on the brink of death when Dido and Mio appear on the scene. Now, I know a lot of people don't necessarily like these two, but I actually find them pretty refreshing. For as dark as Jutsu Kaisen gets, I, I really don't mind some of the goofiness here and there. Maki tosses her katana to Dido on a whim, and Dido does actual serious damage to Noya, even though he can't see cursed spirits. And also, yes, Maki could not see curses normally without her glasses, but with her level up and her awakening, she became like Toji in that her heightened senses allowed her to sense cursed spirits with only her five senses. You know what I mean? Maki is puzzled why this is the case and why her attacks were less lethal than this unknown swordsman. So she decides, nah, fuck it. Why not? And participates in sumo with Mio in his little hyperbolic time chamber thingy. Mio tells Maki there's something on her mind that she is letting weigh her down. Throughout their sumo bouts, Mio explains that Maki is too heavily focused on her own thinking and that she needs to live freely and in the moment and to enjoy herself, which 
prompts another awakening once more. After this, uh, Noya can't even touch her. Maki starts to look at things such as air pressure and wind resistance, temperature, and, and all these different things to finally understand how to pipe how to fight properly and to fight true to herself. As they all corner Noya, Noya casts a domain expansion which auto attacks Dido and Mio. They all take significant damage, but Maki snatches soul split Katana back from Dido and splits Noya in half, finally killing him. It's actually revealed because Noya's domain was on autopilot for the sure hit, it relied on cursed energy to target, uh, kind of similar to a heat seeking missile. But since Maki has no cursed energy, Noya's domain couldn't track and we get this quote at the end here, which states that 12 years after his death, a fighter equal to Toji Zenin has been realized in Maki. Now, mind you, it doesn't say close, it doesn't say approaching, but a fighter equal to Toji Zenin. Maki has phenomenal feats in this series post Shibuya, and I have no doubt that the animators over at Mappa Studios will make this look fantastic. Maki is easily a high grade one sorcerer at this point, even though she's technically still a grade four because she never, you know, officially got promoted. Like, kind of like how Naruto was a Genin in the middle of the, the fucking Shinobi World War. Not that drastic of a gap, but you, you, you know what I mean. Maki is one of the heaviest hitters in Jujutsu Tech's roster at the current moment. I mean, she's here pictured along Yuta, Hikaru, and Yuji as Gojo's pride and joy and what Gojo was aiming for for the next generation of sorcerers. Also, let me let me let me make something very clear. Yuji is my guy. I love Yuji. Great character. Love his fights and all. He would get fucking manhand manhandled woman handled talking ball handled by Maki and it is not even close. Like, yeah, Mahito is fast and all, but I mean, he, he wasn't even Mach 3 speed, you know what I mean? I mean, Maki crushed an entire clan in a little under 15 minutes, grade one sorcerers and all. Like, Sakuna was more surprised about Maki showing up to throw hands with him momentarily than Yuji, and Yuji was rage boosted at this point, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, Yuji threw a car, blah, 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 but did Yuji fight it went against something that could go over 2,000 miles per hour? I, nah, nah, I, I don't think so. With all the information provided, I think it can be safely assumed that Maki is a very, very potent threat to the forces of evil that our characters will be facing here on out in the story. I think that at some point she will surpass Toji's legacy if, you know, it's not implied that she already has already. Uh, I think it's about time for her to kind of step out of that shell and I think she's definitely proved herself as far as her lethality and her mentality goes. I'm definitely interested to see that. As far as compared to the rest of the cast characters around her, it's kind of weird because, I mean, I get like I said, she would give Yuji work, but I mean, like, you two would probably kill her, but Kari actually... Now that I think about it, I don't really know if Akari could do that much to her. I'm like, his cursed energy is cool, whatever, but I feel like she has way more lethality, like in a physical manner, especially with the coming with sword play coming into play. I guess it'd be a round of endurance. It starts coming to, I guess, because considering that, you know, his jackpots and all that and her having to last against that but after the four minutes, and 30 seconds or whatever it is. But, huh. That's actually, that's actually really interesting to think about. Anyway, uh, but yeah, so Maki, obviously very, very, very strong. I, I probably one of the strongest sorcerers in the verse with, you know, obviously no curse energy. Um, is she going to be able to do, do something against Sakuna or Kenjaku? I have no idea. Probably not. <laughs> we'll see. Maki's my girl, man. And I'm very curious to see what Gege decides to cook up for her. Obviously, Maki is incredibly strong. She has a very good tactical mindset. So with some more curse tools and some more assistance on her side, I'm very curious to see how she's going to take Take on a lot of these final threats coming into the series. Anyway, guys, speaking boy, Daffy, guys, thank you guys so much for joining me on this video. Make sure you leave a like in the video and subscribe and just let me know what you guys think, man. Do you guys love Maki? Do you hate Maki? Maki is probably one of my favorite characters as I just, you know, went on a whole 15 minute glazing session. Do you know what I mean? Um, but just, yeah, thank you guys for all for joining me and I will see you in the next video. Y'all make sure you take care and have a good one. Peace.